I, you know, I've done, I've done all of Brighton. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Isles. Uh, welcome back. Hope you've been looking after yourselves, looking after each other, pulling your heads in and all that jazz. Welcome back. Yes, we're going to get straight into it. Today is an Amazon Prime original film, uh, so let's get straight into it. Today's review is about The Tomorrow War. Star-Lord is back to the future, where a war against humanity and aliens is out of control. So much so, that soldiers from 28 years in the future come to recruit civilians from the past. It's conscription gone mad! Now that Uncle Sam has a time machine, who's to say how far back he'll go? But don't think about it too hard, let's have a bit of explosion goodness in The Tomorrow War, today. And that is a synopsis for the Tomorrow War, you can find IMDb. Uh, this film is an Amazon Prime original, as far as I'm aware. It's directed by Chris McKay, who directed the Lego Batman movie, and was written by Zach Dean, who has written stuff. Andy Dwyer and his delicious pecs are on screen here as our protagonist hero. Uh, we know that he's ex-military, uh, so we know they can handle all the action scenes later on in the film. We know this by a very convenient phone call with Mr. Exposition. The movie uh, does something that I haven't seen for quite a while, uh, a thing called build-up. Uh, before we get into the shooty-shooty action, um, films and blockbusters used to have this thing called build-up back in the day. Uh, blockbusters like uh, Jurassic Park or, or, or Aliens. Uh, all this uh, build-up helps to establish uh, what's worth saving for a hero and relationships that may be sacrificed if he fails. His wife here is played by Betty Gilpin, who I absolutely loved in the show Glow. Very disappointed that that was cancelled. Uh, and stars in one of the best violent action films that I've seen in recent past, a film called The Hunt. After this episode, go watch that. It is awesome. We then meet Chris Pratt's uh, absentee father, played here by the one and only awesome J.K. Simmons. Everything this guy is in, he elevates. Every scene he's in, he just eats it up. His character here is also ex-military, and he uh, he's the, the manliest man that ever manned, is his character. I could almost smell the testosterone oozing through the screen. Uh, he's looking good for 66 years old, I'll tell you what. And by the look of him on screen, it looks like he can kick the shit out of guys half his age while also simultaneously impregnating all the women in the room. Hmm. I wonder where I can get my hands on some steroids. Not everyone in this world is uh, eligible to be recruited for the future war. Uh, the future dudes uh, come over to the past where we are, uh, well, 2022 in this film, and they can test your DNA and instantly know everything about you, even when you're going to die. So, the current government. And they only recruit people who they know is going to die uh, within under 10 years, or something like that. Chris Pratt is perfectly balanced here. He's an awesome lead in this film. He's not so goofy like Star-Lord or Andy Dwyer. He does have a bit of uh, chuckle funny moments here, but not too much. But he's also not uber serious either, which this film sure as shit cannot be, and it doesn't, which I liked. Uh, he's the perfect he's the perfect protagonist in this action, um, yeah, action romp. Uh, you're really rooting for him. You care for his character and his family, because uh, he's so goddamn charming. Is he the best Chris? Mm, I don't know, comment down below who your favourite one is and why. There is a sidekick character that I was well aware of uh, going into it because of the trailer and looked incredibly annoying, but he's not in the film all the way through, which was nice. He's that, you know, you've seen it in these sort of films. He's the unfunny social commentary voice of the audience character. Uh, he's written kind of like a character from Friends. It's always hard for a film to tackle this time jump or time travel thing. It's always a sticky bitch to get into. Uh, and in this film, one character even asking, why not go back to before the war even started? Time jump then. And another character explaining, it doesn't work like that. Sick! Thanks for that. You just gave us the J.J. Abrams explanation of time travel. Cool. But then instantly they do go into a, a scientific jargon explanation of how the whole time travel thing works. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention. I'm not here for that. I didn't give a shit. But obviously, this piece of dialogue was purely written for the online trolls uh, who were just going on the internet on rants, uh, trying to stop everyone from having a bloody good time. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all, too. Yes. The time jump that leads 
uh, the good guys, I suppose you can call them, into the alien battle was really tense, I have to admit. It was quite exciting. A little bit too heavy on the CGI, but fuck it, what are you going to do with this kind of movie? Uh, it does take a while to be introduced to the aliens, which I really, really liked. That cheeky little build-up right there again. Um, and it was a good amount of setup, which I liked. The right amount, if you will. And But once they get started, boom, they're going all in. There are multiple locations, and like I said before, there's a fair amount of CGI. Uh, but it was all done pretty well, I'll be honest with you. Again, I was just in it for the fun and for the action, and the characters were pretty good as well. This film takes us on a journey all over the place and jumps around a bit. It doesn't stay in one location for too long, which, in my opinion, helped the film. We also get some nice POV action shots that will give gamers everywhere a nice stiffy. And there is some shonky writing here and there, I'll be honest with you. One monologue in particular that pops to mind. Uh, but it's not eye-rollingly painful for the majority of the film. Uh, and there's a fair bit of heart as the film goes on, I'll be honest with you. Like, there's one monologue, however, by uh, Yvonne Ostrovsky, um, I think that's how her name is pronounced, who is, that is a real tearjerker. I'll be honest with you, it's a really good monologue, and she's bloody awesome in this film, and she has really good character development too. I won't spoil what it is, but it's quite delightful. This film also does something that I like quite well, that, again, I haven't seen in a lot of films recently, a thing called setup and payoff, okay? Films used to do it all the time, and this film does it quite well. There's things that are set up earlier in the film, or mentioned, or little character quirks uh, that are either a reveal later or information that the main characters need to sort of help win the day, or at least on the path to do so. Uh, I love a good callback, I uh, love it in comedy, love it in film, uh, it just, you know, it just tickles the testes. It is a full-blown action uh, extravaganza, um, and I kind of knew that going in, kind of what I was hoping for, and it's exactly what I got. It's not too over-the-top macho, uh, but not panderingly woke either. It's actually the perfect balance. There's obviously heavy themes here of human self-destruction, uh, you know, what we're destined to do, I suppose, and global warming, because this is 2021, we have to have some themes as such in uh, a sci-fi action movie. Uh, it also questions whether you want to know the outcome of your life, if you were privy to that information. Would you want to know? Would you not want to know? Would it take the lust for life away? That's a good sort of theme for time travel movies. This does quite well. Uh, I did enjoy it. Um, let's, let's be honest. There are worse ways to spend two hours, let me tell you. Even though it was an action film, it was good to see science being used as a weapon here, because, I don't know if I mentioned before, but Chris Pratt's character is, uh, as far as I could tell, a scientist, or at least was. And, uh, yeah, it was used as a weapon to sort of help uh, win the day, which I kind of like. Not just gunpowder and fighty-fighty, which was uh, quite refreshing. If this film was an elevator pitch, it'd be obviously Aliens meets World War Z. Uh, not just for the feel of the film, but also for the look. Although this film was a pretty basic action film, it wasn't necessarily structured like one. Uh, I mean, the first sort of half, well, the first third was, I'll be honest, but I wasn't 100% sure where it was going to go. It kind of felt original and not knowing where we were going to end up, uh, minus the third act, which got a little bit too predictable, but hey, that's the third act for most films, let's be honest. Uh, I feel it was a, a. It wouldn't be this case if it was released in cinemas worldwide, like, I don't know, a big blockbuster that was at the cinemas that the whole studio was riding on, like a $300 million budget film. I feel like it was less, less of a risk because it was a streaming service original, being Amazon Prime here. Uh, and the question must be asked is this the future for blockbusters? Is this the future for cinema with streaming? Probably, let's be honest, because. If anything to go by, you look at the big releases, uh, like The Black Widow, which was last week's episode, you could also simultaneously get that on Disney Plus streaming. And it's happening with a few other films now. They get cinema releases, but also streaming at the same time that you can pay for in the comfort of, comfort of your own home. That seems to be where cinema's going. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. There's probably pros and cons for both. Uh, let's just see how it plays out. But um, yeah, I think it was a good thing for this movie because it seemed to be a lot more risk taking in this movie and not uh, being overly predictable, which I dug. I like that, especially for a, a Hollywood blockbuster. Anyway, guys, that's my little uh, review of The Tomorrow War. Uh, again, as I said, it's streaming on Amazon Prime right now. Uh, do I recommend it? Yes, I do. It's a solid two and a half star, three star movie. You just sort of tune out, watch some action, explosion-y, awesome Chris Pat, uh, Pratt, uh, J.K. Simmons, it's just a good bloody time, and uh, you know what? In this day and age, 
that's all you really need. Anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, please give this episode a like if you could. Your love and support keeps this channel uh, floating and going along, and uh, we love to see those thumbs up when we can. Of course, hit that subscribe icon and notification button. Uh, yeah, your love and support keeps us going. So thank you for that, and I'll see you next time. And as always, kids, stay spooky. Mm -hmm.